A massive part of our mission is building out a local regenerative food system. And a big piece of that is going to be storage, cold storage specifically. Want to share a project in the whole process as we go through taking a refrigerated shipping container and turning it into a walk-in cooler. So we're gonna lay out the whole process. That way you might be able to do the same, whether it's for a market, a farmer, restaurant, whatever you may need. We're gonna take a 40 by eight area using an air conditioner and a really, really cool piece of technology that tricks it to make it get really cold. All right, so we're gonna walk through this project and kind of how we decided to do it the way we did. This is gonna be the rear, the back of the 40 foot insulated shipping container. And this is where the refrigeration unit that does not work is. So we've lost about a foot, two foot there from that 40. This section, our goal is to get to about 38 degrees. So we don't have a whole lot of produce at the market that we need refrigeration uh, level. So we're only gonna come out to about eight foot and we will have the air conditioner unit hooked up to a regular uh, cool bot. And so that's gonna be 38 degrees is our goal. We will build a partition and uh, don't know for sure if we're just gonna do the hang down plastic or make a, a, a door there, but it will be insulated um, through that. This next section is gonna be about 17 feet and our target there is going to be 48 degrees. And that 48 degrees will be coming from uh, the same air conditioning unit that we use in the, the back section and a CoolBot Pro. Now the CoolBot Pro is really neat because it gives us the ability to hook up to a phone. So I can control this middle section from the phone, which will, you know, I feel pretty comfortable at and knowing that the bulk of our produce, this is where we're gonna have things like uh, uh, the potatoes and the uh, tomatoes will vary because we'll give us a, 48 is like the lowest. We will be able to raise it up substantially depending on what produce that we have in that section. The front section, we will build a full wall that will have a door in it, very heavily insulated. I'm gonna go through some of the products that we have before we get there as we show the process of this. So this one will not be hooked up to a cool bath. It's just an air conditioner. So all three of those air conditioners will be cut out and it will be having the exhaust towards the back. This, we're gonna have 64 degrees, kind of that lowest uh, that we are going for. Right here, when these doors close, there's actually a space. It's a gap in here that will be able to have the doorknob, we'll have plenty of insulation. It's up on these grates and that is going to help us be able to close these doors when we need to, uh, to get that extra insulation. But even when the doors open, I think it's still gonna work really well. So let's go through some of the products that we are getting beforehand, and then we'll show you the build out. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna frame out and build this wall. So it'll be an insulated wall with a regular exterior door. Got the highest rated, uh, just from Home Depot, uh, door that we, we could. And that's gonna go center. That way we can use both walls and come in here. Got a little ramp uh, that is foldable that we can put there. Got a bigger dolly, that way the wheels don't fall into the grates. And then as we get this wall built, we have got different adhesives that we're going to use to attach the wood along with the self-tapping screws to attach the exterior two by fours. And then we'll build that out, frame the door. And then once the door's in place, we'll take this foam. The foam board is going to be a really thick one. We've got one that is two inches that we will use on one side and an inch on the other side. We'll also be able to take these foams and put on the inside, in, in between the two by fours to give more. And we're gonna set that with our adhesive and then some of the other products that we use will be the gap fill. 
to get through all the, because we want this dude as tight as we can. So this is the, the real heavy expander. So that'll be put around any, any sort of edges in all the crevices. Along with, this is that, uh, so F26 would be another option. I just got what came back as kind of the best reviews on the liquid nails. It's the Fusit Max. That's gonna go from the insulation to the wood, from the wood to the exterior, or the interior of the container to the metal. It should really do a good job on all of those. Regular uh, deck screws, I really like those T-drives and then the self-tapping for anything that we're gonna take that wood into the metal. And then we'll come around and fill that, fill that in. That is pretty much the process as we do the front. We'll set our two other walls to give us three different sections and be able to give us a lot of leeway on the varying seasons from different produce. And uh, I think it's gonna be wonderful. This exterior door that we're going to use for that is going to open inside and that's going to give us the opportunity to put this on the outside to kind of give us another layer of protection when the doors are open. So we'll be able to have that open as we're bringing in produce through the dolly and the wagons and still have a little bit of protection. We use these on all the other walk-in coolers that we've got and they work phenomenally and that uh, that little extra layer of protection when you look at a thermal imager matters a whole lot these uh, just came from Amazon we ordered them really good ratings the uh, I like the stainless on there just for that little bit of exposure to maybe maybe some elements that will hold up very well this plastic won't be out in the Sun directly very much at all again that's why we're you uh, gonna use that gap and the door is not going to be in the exterior and we always shut these insulated doors that are on the container itself The real magic on this project is right here because this insulated container came with a refrigeration unit. It's just that it's very expensive to replace or repair and you're dependent on an expert, somebody that can uh, you know, come out when, when you have a problem and get it replaced. These, pretty much anybody can deal with it. So I wanna highlight how a cool bot works and what we're using. So we got this, uh, this air conditioner, it is a 24,000 BTU unit from Amazon. We'll share that link with you. And the CoolBot system that can also be bought from Amazon or directly from CoolBot that you can uh, hook up here. So how it works is there's a sensor that goes into these, these fins and it reads the actual temperature, right? So right now it's 48 degrees and then it connects with the sensor that reads on the air conditioner. Now, what the CoolBot is able to do is it's able to trick, it's able to trick the sensor to make it think it's warmer than it actually is. So the air conditioner doesn't shut down. So it keeps getting really cold. Like you can only set the air conditioner down this unit to 60 so that wouldn't be cold enough to hold our produce that we need this is very 
easy to install. It's very easy to like replace. So we would, if, if the air conditioner goes out, which in another unit we've had, I've had to replace the air conditioner twice. You pull it out and you put in another one and you're ready to go. That's why we use the same one everywhere. Then we go a little bit oversized, but Coolbot will provide uh, the space you need, the temperature you need, and help you size it through some really cool sheets that they've got. So this is part of the magic that we've got, and this is one of three units in three different sections that we're using in this container. I've known you my entire <laughs> life, and if anybody really knew the, the, the back stories there, but anyways, I uh, worked together at EMS, you were a fire department, grew up in the same town, just, it's We it's did. Life. So when I asked you to help with this project, you came in and helped. It would have not happened without you. So tell me a little bit about that process of what, what you did to, to help uh, bring it to life. Okay, first off, um, you had the vision. I'm gonna give you credit for that because I have zero vision on anything. My wife, when she opened a restaurant, I said, this will not work. It has been highly successful. Uh, but if somebody has a vision, normally I can implement it. We started with this cool bot when we moved in to the restaurant we're at now. Um, anybody that's been in the restaurant business knows that refrigeration is the bane of our existence. And my wife, I think, actually found this, and I said, because I am a person of vision, I said, that will never work, you know? <laughs> and she said, well, let's try it. So we went in and, and we got it. I talked to the heat and air guys, and they said, well, let's try it, because he said, literally, you can buy an air conditioner cheaper than we can do a lot of work you know, on, on, a, on a compressor. So anyway, we got it, put it in. Um, it has worked phenomenal for us. We keep our walk-in set between 37 and 38. It is a 10 by 14 uh, unit. Uh, the only problem we have ever had these have been lightning related when we had a lightning strike. We keep a spare there, and one of the advantages to this to anybody, to a farmer, to a restaurant, or anybody, is if you have a problem, you just pull the old unit out and put the spare in and you're not down. You're not waiting on parts, which since COVID has been a nightmare. Uh, you're not waiting on a heat and air guy because we don't have enough skill people around anymore. You have to mess with them sometimes. Humidity's a little bit of a problem with them sometimes. You have to change it up, but all the settings are in here. And anybody that can do almost anything can install one of these. The main requirements for this is you need polystyrene insulation, um, fiberglass will not work, rock wool won't work, and the unit needs to be sealed up tight. You know, when we got to talking about this originally, we were going over building a building, we were going over getting the Connex and insulating the building with spray foam, and then you found this thing, and I think you were in it for $4,500. So you've got this whole unit, and it's, it's 40 foot long, and you've divided it into three rooms. What we did is came in, we cut the holes, uh, installed the units, ran the electricity, and all of this with the advent of YouTube is, is literally, anybody can do this. You know, it, it is not rocket science anymore. Now you've got three separate rooms that you can control at three different temperatures, and anybody, a small farmer, the guy who's out there uh, doing a truck patch, um, where I think one of the things that, that people really jumped on this is hunters because they're able to build a small room, they're able to take and kill their deer, hang it up in there and age it. Uh, the, the guy, uh, the cattle operation, you know, that wants to age their beef can do it. So it is just a really versatile setup. Well, thank you. I think it's such a just an invaluable tool for the whole, that whole food system. I keep going back to it. Like we got to have our farmers, but we got to be able to make them profitable and not lose money and yes. store it. And just getting that infrastructure in here, I think there's a big key. I really hope that, you know, others are able to take what we've done in this project and, and implement it. So we've divided up these three different sections. So 40 foot container, three different sections. We want our coldest one back here. We've used these foam boards and we've siliconed around all the edges, used foam spray, uh, using these, these walk through flaps and even a makeshift. We'll, we'll kind of update that down the road and show you what we figure out, but we're going to be able to close this wall off even more because we want that the coldest. This section is going to be our most utilized because different produce has different uh, 
needs with humidity and temperature. So this big section, I've got the CoolBot Pro, which will actually hook up to my phone and I can be able to control it from there. So again, the same air conditioner, the same, same setup that we've got, just different sections. So let's look at the front. On this front section, same air conditioner that we used, and it does not, it's not hooked up to a cool bot. It will give us just a little bit of that temperature control to where we can unload here, we can sort, we can stack, so we'll get it cleared up. There'll be tables, there'll be some more shelves, and this wall, we'll look and see how, how we need to do that on closing it up, whether we hang another one of these uh, or end up doing another door. Just a, it's an experiment because these are going to be very customizable to whatever needs that you, you have, but we have got to have a working area with all the produce coming in until it goes to the appropriate place, whether that's the medium cold or the very cold sections. This is something that is a game changer for us. I think any farmer, market, uh, restaurant can take a lot of lessons from a really self-doing project. So Mike, I just wanted to have like just a quick little conversation. You as a farmer and as owning a brewery and a restaurant, you understand refrigeration. I just wanted like your perspective on why this project and this route is is possibly a good a good option. Well, we built our walk-in coolers uh, inside inside a, a red iron building. Uh, we used six by sixes instead of two by fours, and we shoved them full of, of foam and insulation. And then we used a cool bot. And cool bot, which we found out was excellent, you know, invented by a farmer. So we're like, we're loving that. And uh, you know, we started out using it to keep our beer cold. And now we probably own six cool bots and all of our coolers we've built by hand. Um, and we've saved so much money. You know, the so we had a company come out from Fort Smith the, to to build us something approximately the size of two thirds of this. And it was 25,000 at, at the lowest, and they said it could go up to 30, depending on what the price of stuff was when it came in. And we built one. We we ripped and get and found some uh, pieces, parts here and there, and put one together for 15. Yeah. You know, still not cheap, but you know, that's 10,000 bucks. That's that's a lot of apples or a lot of carrots or a lot of whatever it is you're growing. A lot of in. And from that farming perspective, um, you know, I've had a lot come through here even as we're doing this project, just loving it. What, do you feel like that's a big downside of building out this, this food system we're trying to do, a big limiting factor? Yes, absolutely. Storage, you need storage. And farmers, you know, they can, they can sell at farmers markets, small farmers like me can sell at farmers markets, but at the end of the farmers market, either you ran out, which means you should have picked more, or you have stuff left over, which means you should have picked less. You're probably going to feed it to the pigs or put it in a compost. But if you have something like this where you can keep it another week or you can keep it another three days until somebody has time to can it or somebody has time to dehydrate it or somebody has, you have time to put it out on Facebook or something that you've got extras, come to the farm, you know, a little extra sale this Monday left over from the farmer's market. And you can, you can, you can sell, it, it's all money making. You know, the, the more refrigeration you have, the, the more money you're going to make off the products that you get out of the ground. Well, thank you for just adding adding more value to, to the project. And, hey, uh, no love, problem. Love working with you, my All friend. All right, thank you. It's always good to see you.
before we are able to get produce and meat, other foods to the markets, to the restaurants, to your plate, we've got to have the infrastructure in place, right? So we need the refrigeration. We need to be able to aggregate and distribute everything. So necessity is the mother of all invention. And I think this project really kind of showcases we had a real big need in expanding to be able to support more farmers, to be able to support more restaurants, and then, you know, obviously our customers. So what we've done is we've laid out the entire project through the Sewing Prosperity Institute. And that's going to have the instructions, the item lists, the schematics, the whole videos, in more in depth into what you can expect on if you want to do this exact version or maybe customize it a little bit. It has a lot of information there. So you can go ahead and join the Sewing Prosperity Institute. A lot of health, uh, agriculture, business. It's a lifestyle. So Sewing Prosperity is a lifestyle and this building that food system is a big, big part of it.